Hey everybody, welcome back to Chris's Trains and Things. It is the beginning of 2023, which means we have to do our year in review for 2022. And boy, it seems like we just did the year in review for 2022. So what a year 2022 was for the, especially the growth of this channel. And, and that all goes out to all of you for subscribing and tuning in to the videos that we put out here and just really interacting with me through this platform and then through Instagram as well and maybe Facebook and then at shows or at hobby shops. We've been visiting a lot of hobby shops recently. I've gotten to meet a lot of people there. I'm going to go back to the beginning of 2022. I had 2,225 subscribers, which was great. We had just hit 2,000 subs. We did a big celebration for that. and my So that was great. And then our goal was 3,000 subs. And we hit 3,000 subs right at the end of March, about March 28th we hit 3,000 subs. So that was my goal for the year. And just the other day, December 31st, we were at 5,896. I mean, that's growth that I did not expect to see. And so thank you all for that. And that all goes a lot to the videos that we put out and, and the fact that you all engage with those videos. So well, let's talk about that. Looking back at the beginning of the year, we had a big project that we started, and that was ripping out the yard on the other side of the layout. So what did that entail? Well, we had the old storage yard there. I had four tracks and a Ross Y, or a Ross four-way switch. And my goal was to be able to just use that as storage tracks because I didn't have shelves for my wall. I didn't want to take trains on and off the layout and put them in boxes. I didn't have the wall space for them at the time. And really, in reality, my yard was not big enough. I, it was about... 10 feet long, each storage track is about 10 feet long, which in my mind, building this layout, first time building something this size, thought it was going to be big enough. It wasn't. It needed to be at least twice as big, at least. And so it was really pointless. I couldn't, I needed two of the storage tracks to fit a passenger train. So a lot of wasted space and it just didn't look right. Scenically, there was just too much track. So we tore that out. And what did we do? Well, we added that Woodland Scenics Town. And that was really courtesy of the help from my friend Ted, who owns Cool Trains in Salunga, Lancaster. He was really great at dealing with my ADHD of just emailing him nightly and saying, hey, I need this building. Can we order this one? Hey, can we order this one? And he, he was just patient with me and helped get those buildings in stock so that I could purchase them from him. So thank you, Ted, for that. We then added our lower loop. So we then went down and we added our lower reversing loop and storage tracks down underneath the layout as well to really make this a much more dynamic layout and display. So that was all a ton of fun. You know, we then did some videos on my favorite train in my collection, and we unveiled that train, and, and that was the M1A, the Pensy M1A. And that was at the time, uh, you know, that, that was my favorite engine, and it might still be one of my favorite engines in my collection. But, you know, not shortly thereafter, we, you know, we had the roundhouse, which we... And then in February, we were able to go hobby shop hopping back down to Toy Trains and Collectibles, a store that I went to initially back in 2001, in December of 2001, we went back in, in April, or we went back in February, and the whole purpose of us going there was because they had just acquired a collection and we wanted to go look through it, and that's where we found the Angus. So the MTH PS3 0880 Erie Angus, such a neat locomotive that I've added to my collection, and the only MTH steam locomotive that I've added to my collection as well. And that one is really, really a lot of fun to have. Back then we, we go into some, some new Lionel things that came in and I was able to pick up when I was at Toy Trains and Collectibles, I picked up the pacemaker freight set. They had one left. There were not a lot of them available in any other hobby shops on the web. And so I snagged one while I was there and then had to pick up the pacemaker mohawk. So my first fantasy locomotive that I, that I own in my collection, that red pacemaker mohawk stands out. It's one of our family favorites here and a fan favorite for people that come over the layout. So it's really great to have that locomotive and fun to run around the layout. You know, we then were continuing a lot of work with scenery. To, to be honest with you, we've, there's been a lot that's changed on this layout, including the backdrops that you'll see behind me. Those went up at some point this, this past year as well. And for a lot of people that have been here before the backdrops and then come since then, 
I get a lot of comments how much of those have really changed the dynamic of this layout and just the overall scenery as you walk around and kind of take in some of the views. So I, I'm really thankful for those. I purchased those from trainjunkies.com. Uh, William from Train Junkies was great to work with and help, helps get us hooked up with these. And they do a really nice job of just completing the scene. But talking about scenery, that upper level, you know, a lot of that upper level was not unfinished. We had the industry siding up there and that was pretty much it. I had one other abandoned building that I had purchased from eBay years ago, but nothing else. So we added the Woodland Scenics Farmhouse the Woodland Scenics Barn, but we had this, we needed to scenic that. So we spent a weekend and I did a video on that work as well as we completed that scene. We built it up to add some dimension, not just doing it all on flat plywood. And then we added some static grass. We did a lot of static grass work and blended that scene together and then added the Woodland Scenics Utility System, some super trees and a little little uh, patch of crop there, some corn in a fenced in area. And then we weathered an old truck just to complete that scene. That was a fun project. I hope you enjoyed that video. You know, moving on, it was time for me to start beginning collaborating with others, not just other YouTubers, but some other folks within the industry. And so I was able to connect with Stu Rankin from the TCA. And one of the things that we wanted to do there was look at doing a Strasburg car. Atlas had just announced Atlas had just announced that they were doing snow plows and there's one that needed to be done. I wish this was done in no scale. So Stu and I connected, we went and we looked at the, the actual Strasburg snow plow, the Russell snow plow, and lo and behold, we were able to get a custom run of that set up. And that was, that was a lot of fun working with Stu on that project. We got the artwork in, we were still waiting on that to arrive. Atlas takes their time because they want to make sure they get everything right. And so we can we can respect and honor that. Just shortly after that, we then visited Henning's Trains in Lansdale. Went and visited them uh, with the idea that I was going to go there to the hobby shop. And then Harry and I were going to go back to the old train farm and see the layout there and take all that in. So we did a video on that private railroad. So actually part of the North Penn O-Gagers. And we just got a lot of video there because the scenery is fantastic. It's such a neat track design because it's all one loop which is crazy but it's really neat to neat to see so we did And then more things came in from the 2021 catalogs, including the Acela. So the that was the big, big, big purchase from the 2021 catalog was the Acela and the expansion pack. Wasn't initially getting the expansion pack, but I ended up adding that. So those arrived. What an awesome set. It's massive. It takes up the entire wall display that I have when it's not on the layout. And then shortly thereafter, you know, I went to go visit my friend Chris and he had the Polar Express version. I was like, oh, it's really nice. And we knew that there probably weren't a lot of those built. So we added the Polar Express version as well. How could you say no to that? <laughs> October York 2021, I picked up an, uh, 
466T Boston and Albany K-Line TMCC tank engine. Now that engine we brought back to the layout, it didn't work. And so my buddy Sid was here. I said, Sid, work your magic. Let's give it all the bells and all the whistles. And so that's what he did. And that arrived this year as well. It took him a lot of time, but we had to get the parts and make sure everything was going to work right. And he did a fantastic job with that engine. So it is a one of one K-Line 466T with legacy, whistle steam, and a swinging bell. then time to go back to York. As always, York comes back around twice a year. So we're back to York again in April. We're only in April, folks. And we got to look around at some other great things from there. I ended up picking up a lot of big boxcars at York. And so let's check out some of those giant boxcars that we picked up. And lest we forget the Broadway Limited set. seem like there's a lot of things that I'm purchasing. I'm not going over all the things that I sold. And I've talked about that in my budgeting video that I put out a couple years ago. I do sell a lot of things. In fact, I get made fun of it because I do bring things in and then they do go for sale. In fact, the, my Cardinal set, which I just did a video of and I've had for a couple months, is actually for sale. We're going to talk about the Cardinal set in a little bit, but th those are the types of things that happen. You can't just buy everything. There's a budgeting process to all of this. You have to rotate the collection. You can't just keep buying things. You can't, the money doesn't grow on trees. So, uh, you know, some things do rotate out. But as we move through the summer, I then connected with the owner of the Choo Choo Barn, which is just up the road from my house. Many of you know the Choo Choo Barn in Strasburg, PA. Big model train display uh, built by Tom Groff. He did a lot of the animation work, which is really what I like to go to see. The trains are great. They're on old Williams locomotives because of the, the intricacy of how that whole track system works. But they, the animations that Tom built are just phenomenal. And so we got to go do a tour of the Choo Choo Barn, get behind the scenes. I got to get under the layout and got to talk to Christy as well. And that video did really well on the channel and it was a lot of fun to do just because the Choo Choo Barn is such a neat, neat place. <laughs> summertime and we went to Detroit. 
it was time to go visit my buddy Jason. And so Sid and I met at BWI Airport and off we went and visited our buddy Jason out in Detroit. And that trip was fantastic. So on that trip, it was great because we got to go to a lot of layouts. We went to not only visit Jason and hang out with him, we went to Stockyard Express. We went to visit Norm Charbonneau's layout. We went to the Brownings, Trey Mandan and his dad's place to see their layout. We got to go to the Detroit Three Railers Clubhouse and then got to go to dinner with them. What an awesome weekend whirlwind that was. Let's watch some of those clips. forget when we were at the Browning's house we did do a six five or six engine lash up and I think they were all vision line engines massive steam engines let's watch <laughs>
I got bored and I decided it was time to start practicing some scenery work in the garage. So I built a little diorama of the Carpenter's Crossing from Strasbourg and we took it up there to check it out. All right, so I've got so some vase green, and I've got um, like a dirt or dead foliage ground cover down here in the field, and then at the base of this hill, bringing out some super trees that I've had made up. All right, so here we go. Here we have it. So this is the crossing at the crossing. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? And then shout out to Mrs. Chris's Trains and Things because I was hanging out here at the house with my buddy Chris, RJ, and Sid, and we got to talking about the train of Palooza. And lo and behold, my wife said I could go, which was awesome. So I got to go back to Detroit for train of Palooza, which was great. So I was back at Jason's house and went a day early to help him get set up and help bring over the three railers layout and then we just enjoyed lots of trains running at his place that day and had a lot of people come over that was a ton of fun let's check that out <laughs> other layouts especially more sharp nose layout I realized a lot of my scenery was not up to my level of par anymore so I the whole center section of layout that I had that scenery was almost done I tore it all out and we redid it and I did some uh, I plan to do a whole video on that whole thing but we pretty much did the before and after but let's check out you can see some of the after work from that Didn't make a whole lot of sense for the station to be where it was, so we decided to bring it back over here. Now, since I also did that, my yard lead used to come right off this curve. So I had this curve here. This was an 096 curve, and then I had it was an 096 switch, and the, um, the diverting was actually the main line. And if you went straight, it took you right into the turntable where the pacemaker mohawk is. What I've done is I've moved that switch all the way down here, about 10 feet or so, and added a longer lead into my yard. What that allows me to do is it allows me to store a train here if I want to, and it uh, just provides a little bit more, I think, realism, and it makes it look like a four-track main line when you come right down to look at the layout, which I think is... Also at April York, I picked up the Altoona Model Works diesel maintenance facility, and so that sat in the box for a long time. I finally decided to work on that, and so we did a build video on that and completed it, and it is a fantastic piece of the, the layout. In fact, I had to extend part of the layout so I could fit it on, because when we tore this scenery out in the center of the layout, I moved my old Corporate kit off, and it wasn't going to fit there properly, so we had to add a new section of the layout behind the roundhouse to accompany or incorporate that diesel facility. But we did a whole build video. Let's check out a piece of that. So here's the entire box out and open. So... These are going to be the pieces of styrene for the roof. This is going to be for the, I believe, shop extension. We've got the side walls here. They are. So the trusses are all in place. I've got the building on its side. As you can see, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our white tacky glue 
And we're going to take our painted fascia here. Now so we have the roofing in place. We're going to begin to put the concrete caps on, just like we have on the roundhouse. So I want to make sure that our joints are clean. We might have to come in here and just scrape some, some dust out from the grout work. These and then we had Fall York, and I was able to pick up some of the SD45 from Lionel. Powered unit and a super base unit. So let's bring them out. I like to have a lot of people come over to my lot. So a lot of friends and people that I've met before are invited to come over. Again, people that I've met before uh, can come over and we were able to run a lot of trains. And so let's enjoy some of the highlights from that evening and some that maybe you've seen before on some other channels. <laughs> some things off we had the cardinal set that was picked up this year we got to it was in some videos i did an article for that and a video for trains.com which is classic toy trains and we that was highlighted in, for them and then i did a running video with it a couple weeks ago and then we picked up the h10 i had picked up i had traded an engine for a long island h10 that needed some work we fixed it up traded it for pennsylvania h10 it was a really cool locomotive and I ended up, has, I've actually sold it since then, as I told you. I rotate my collection a little bit. And then we were able to run the Y3, the PR Y3. What an awesome engine that thing was. I really, really wanted to keep that. Unfortunately, it's got to go back. And it is available for any of you on trains.com at trains with a Z. 
who this year I've also connected with and begun collaborating with. So check them out. Use code CTAT at checkout. Save yourself from some coin and help support the channel. We also got to travel a little bit more this year. We got to go to Train World. That was an awesome experience. And another connection that I, that I really enjoy making is working with them. And their inventory is fantastic. They are fast, fast, fast. You can order something. I ordered the station sound signer for the Cardinal set at noon on Friday, and it was at my door on Saturday at 11 a.m. That's fast. And I don't live close to Long Island. I'm in Southern Pennsylvania, Southeastern PA. So I'm on the other side of the country, but still pretty quick shipping. So love working with Train World. And so I've acquired a lot of things from them in this past year, including the last two trolleys that we've gotten, the Trippy Trolley and the Polar Express Trolley and a lot of other odds and ends and things like that. There's some new locomotives that are on their way that should be here tomorrow, actually. And they're from Train World. We'll check those out soon. So what a year it's been. So I guess all of this is to say thank you. And I haven't gone over everything that's happened this year. We've added a lot of other scenic elements and things like that to the layout. In fact, there's some things that I haven't even gone over and uh, even told you about yet that have already changed that still took place in 2022. It's been a great year. And thank you all so much for getting this far in this video. This was a long one, but it was a long year of train related things. And what a hobby, what a community. Thank you all so much. And so 2023 is here. We are sitting at you know, 5,800, almost 5,900 subscribers. So what's our goal for this year? Well, I didn't think we'd be this far. I would love to get to 8,000 subscribers. I, would, I think that's probably doable based on our growth rate. If we could get to 10 by Christmas of next year, I'll be elated. If we can get to 10,000 subscribers, we're going to throw a party. Now, when we get to six, we will do a, a giveaway. I'll do a live stream giveaway that night. I've got something ready to go. But this year is going to be fun. What do we have coming up this year? Well, I, I hope at some point to get do some more Hobby Shop hops. There's a couple that are in the queue that will be coming out soon. But I like to get that some other shops that I've already been to. Hopefully, we can get back to toy trains and collectibles here at some point this winter. I look forward to the April York show, hoping to get there for more than just Friday. Maybe I can get there for Thursday afternoon and Friday and Saturday. We'll have to wait and see. You know, this summer, hopefully I can get back to visit my buddy Jason in Detroit. Hopefully there's a train of Palooza involved there as well. We'll obviously have the fall York show if all things go as planned. So, but hopefully again, we'll hop around to other hobby shops. I'd love to get back to train world at some point. That's a long trip, but man, that's had a lot of fun. And I love collaborating with those guys. So we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a fun year. I appreciate all of you so much. And let me know what else you want to see. We've done a lot of videos, a lot of different things. Sometimes it gets it gets dried up a little bit up here. You know, we're doing a lot of articles and writing for Classic Toy Trains. And I really enjoy writing. And so trying to get the, the creative juices flowing for that, but also for this is tough. So I appreciate all of your collaboration. So thank you all so much for everything that you've done to get us to this point. Let's keep the train moving. Have a great year. Happy New Year. Let's have a great, healthy 2023, full of trains, full of fun, full of family. Take care, guys.